happy to announce the uh, next talk by Michał Zowczak on reverberation mapping and lamp post geometry. Uh, I'm sorry for a very long uh, title, but it will be maybe more clear what I mean after my talk, hopefully. Uh, <clears throat> first, I will show uh, two motivational slides. So, uh, we are studying, uh, or this concerns the uh, lags uh, or delays in uh, time signals in different energy bands that correspond to different components in the center of AGM, the radio quiet end of AGM. So, for example, in this figure, uh, there, is an ob sorry. there is an observational uh, result where you have a time lag uh, which corresponds actually to lags uh, that are between uh, propagating fluctuations on longer time scale, fluctuation coming down from accretion disk to corona, whereas here on higher frequencies, you can see that it's opposite and that this uh, negative time delay will uh, be explained or can be explained by, uh, by reflection from the disk. So we have uh, several components. We have a black hole, accretion disk, and corona. Uh, there are fluctuations coming down from accretion disk to the corona and then from the corona to the reflection from the disk. And this is characterized by this area. Uh, in my talk, I will be concerned in uh, this reflection scenario and uh, I will be showing some results concerning these negative time lags. Uh, another motivational slide is uh, this dependency of uh, these uh, time lags, the time lags at these frequencies where we have these negative time lags. And uh, their absolute value seems to depend on energy very similarly as the spectral shape is. So we, you can see something like uh, soft excess there and the uh, broad island line, which is a famous reflection feature. Uh, just uh, some summary of uh, reference, I'm not going through them. I will just mention that uh, reverberation is a theme which is more than 30 years old and it was first used by Glenford and Mackey uh, in the reverberation of a broad line region, so not in X-ray but in optical band. And uh, I will just skip to the last one. This is a most one of the most recent ones uh, in 2014, uh, which is a review of on X-ray reverberation in AGN. So, <coughs> uh, what I will talk about will be uh, reverberation, X-ray reverberation in AGN in the lamp post geometry. By lamp post geometry, we mean a uh, compact source on the axis of the system illuminating the accretion disk. So some astrophysical motivation would be that uh, uh, there is uh, an observational evidence of a rather compact X-ray source from variability studies, from microlensing studies, and it seems that corona size is really of tens or even lower than 10 RG in diameter it's still not uh, that compact as to be uh, seen as compact source, uh, as a point source. Uh, also, there is some kind of discussion if uh, there is some kind of a base of a possibly aborted jet on the axis of the system, which could uh, also serve as a uh, source of primary uh, X-rays in uh, AGM. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the, the studying of this lamp post geometry also, it is a very useful simplification because many effects should be qualitatively similar with this simple geometry. Uh, it can give us certain limits on the model. For example, now we know that if we want to measure spin of the black hole, we have to illuminate the inner regions of accretion disk enough. And that means that the height of the source would have to be really very close. Huh? Otherwise, if you are farther away above the black hole, you illuminate distant regions more, and then you will not be able to measure a uh, highly spinning black hole. Uh, we can also easily explore the dependence on the many parameters, height of the corona, ionization of the disk, inclination of the observer. And if we want to study the dependence on geometry, which is sort of a goal of these studies, uh, if the, how high is the corona, how large is the corona, we have to know uh, other parameter, how the other parameters influence the results. So is the idea of measuring geometry of the corona via reverberation feasible? Which is uh, one of the topic for Athena uh, satellite. 
So what is the scheme uh, that we are using or what is the model that we are using? We have a central black hole with mass M and spin A. Uh, above it at height H is the corona, which emits in this scenario, or I mean in this uh, uh, isotropically, and uh, uh, it uh, emits uh, power law, primary power law, uh, with cutoff at 0 0.1 and uh, uh, exponential cutoff at 300 kilo electron volts. Then we have a Christian disk, which is Keplerian, geometrically thin and optically thick. And it is ionized due to illumination, so it is, uh, the ionization is computed itself consistently from the illumination and from the density of the disk, which has to be assumed some value. Uh, then the local reprocessing is calculated from Refion X tables uh, by, uh, computations by Ross and Fabian. <coughs> uh, so for each radius, uh, we have ionization uh, parameter, and from that we know what the spectrum will be from these refionics. Refionics tables are calculated for plane parallel uh, slab with cons constant density slab with different ionization uh, degrees. All relativistic effects are taken into account uh, from corona to the observer to the disk, from the disk to the observer, and we call this model here refionics. Uh, when we want to study the time, uh, timing properties and uh, the legs that I have shown, uh, it is uh, good to sort of visualize the thing and <coughs> I did it in these uh, six uh, figure animations. Uh, so the, there is a, on the uh, top row uh, there is a figure or animations for <coughs> Kerr black hole with spin one and on the bottom there is a uh, Schwarzschild black hole. <coughs> on the first row there is an image on the detector's plane. Uh, the color is not a real color. The color is uh, <laughs> the <coughs> uh, energy shift, G factor. Sorry, <coughs> actually it is uh, <coughs> energy of the neutral K alpha line because it is up to eight two electron volts. So one can see that first, uh, when the, there is a flash on the axis of the corona, uh, on the axis of the disk at height h, height h is here uh, three. Uh, first photons that one receives are the photons that arrive from uh, in front of the black hole, and then this echo grows into a sort of a deformed circle, and eventually two echoes develop, one which is uh, near the black hole because it takes very long time to, for the photons to reach from the lamp to the disk very close to the black hole and from the black uh, from this region to the observer and the other echo is the uh, uh, expanding uh, ellipse uh, to infinity on the second row you can see the dynamical spectra that is on x axis there is time on y axis there is uh, energy and one can see uh, some kind of structure due to the in the Kerr black hole case this structure is much simpler for for uh, black hole, Schwarzschild black hole because there is a, we, we assume a hole under the ESCO. And uh, on the light, uh, on the rightmost figures, there is a, a light curve. One can see that due to this uh, hole in the Schwarzschild case, the amplitude of the signal is much uh, smaller than in Kerr black hole. And here there is an evolution of the spectra. You can see, for example, here two parts due to the two echoes, one coming from close to the black hole, one, the other one from the other uh, farther away echo. Uh, figures like this were already produced uh, before 2000, so it's 15 years ago by Andy Young and uh, uh, Reynolds. So this is the picture, however, <coughs> uh, we do not have a reflection spectra that would consist only of the line, but uh, this is the integrated spectrum uh, in time, and uh, by green, there is, this is the primary with uh, cutoffs at 0 0.1 and uh, <coughs> exponential cutoff at higher energies, and this is the response, and you can see that the response of the disk is not just the line, but there is this soft excess. Uh, broad iron line and then Compton hump at higher energies above 10 keV. So 
uh, when we, one wants to calculate the uh, more realistic uh, case, he needs to use uh, the total uh, reflection. <coughs> Here is the example of E squared times flux, a photon flux uh, uh, for Schwarzschild and the uh, Kerr black hole. And one can see, uh, on x-axis there is time, on y-axis there is energy, and color is the intensity in logarithmic scale. And one can see that there is uh, soft excess at lower energies and uh, Compton hump at higher energies. This is the uh, iron line at 6.4 kiloelectron volt. So this was sort of an introduction. What is the lack that uh, one can read in the in the papers? So <coughs> actually, the lack is not a delay uh, of a photon travel time. Uh, between different components like accretion disk or reflection and the uh, corona. Uh, the lag is defined from the <coughs> for, uh, phase of the Fourier transform of the signal. So if we have a reflection signal, uh, it, can be uh, it can be computed as some kind of uh, convolution of uh, primary uh, changes, primary uh, light curve times the response uh, of the disk. If you do the Fourier transform, then this primary is just multiplication, the, the Fourier transform of the primary. So we can easily sort of get rid of it when we compare different energy bands. And uh, uh, this is the Fourier transform of the, of the reflected light curve, uh, which consists of amplitude and of phase. And from this phase, the time lag is calculated. <coughs> Why? Because if uh, the primary would be just a cosine signal, then uh, if you calculate the Fourier transform and uh, what is the contribution to the total signal, because the Fourier transform will have all frequencies, because we have some kind of reflection from extended disk. <coughs> uh, so the, uh, if we consider just the frequency, original frequency, we will see that uh, the signal at this frequency will be shifted by a phase, which can be uh, connected with a shift in time. Uh, so the time lag is defined as the phase over 2p times frequency. So this is the definition of the time lag uh, in these uh, papers. Uh, one more caveat is that uh, we do not observe only the reflection. We observe the total signal reflection plus the primary and the uh, uh, Currently, there is not enough uh, good data that we would, or, and it would be very time consuming, to really uh, model s separately the light curve of the primary and of the reflection. So we use really the whole signal. And uh, what happens then that you are measuring actually the, some kind of total time delay, which is calculated from the total light curve reflection plus the primary. And if you look at uh, what it should look like in, I mean, from theory, uh, the uh, resultant uh, spectrum is actually some kind of uh, primary dependence, uh, amplitude of the primary, times the uh, reflection plus delta function. Uh, not times, but convolution. Uh, this uh, reflection here, I mean uh, reflection spectrum developing in time over the integrated uh, flux in primary in time. So there is a primary dependence on energy. So when we Fourier this, the, the, we will have a Fourier transform of the reflection plus one, which means that the, total, the, the phase then will be uh, diluted by this primary, that is plus one. And this quite uh, changes uh, then the, the picture, the results. Uh, this is just to show, again, the total integrated spectra, and there is a sum of parameters from which we perform the computations. Uh, we can discuss it if we want later on. Uh, what, uh, we, or what is done in this <coughs> is that we want to study uh, the delays between the fluctuations in corona, which is uh, the primary power law, and but with the reflection. So it is good to actually calculate these delays in different energy bands. 
for example, in the energy bands where the primary is the largest, it will characterize the delays, del the delays from the corona. And uh, if we take uh, the energy band where there is soft excess or Compton hump or maybe even the iron line, uh, that should be that should be characterized the delays uh, from the reflection. So what we usually do is that we compare these time lags or these phases between different energy bands. So here we take uh, as a base uh, energy band with respect to which we will measure the other ones uh, in between one and three kiloelectron volts. So we will measure the lags between reflection, that is soft excess iron line or Compton hump, and the primary characterized at this energy band. These are the results for the time lags, for the lags, uh, and the dependence on geometry. So <coughs> if you look at the overall shape, uh, you can see that uh, at first it's negative, then there is a phase wrapping. So it goes to positive, and uh, it's a kind of similar to what I've shown at my first motivational slide. There was also negative time lag, and on the left figure, there, there was a phase, or there was something like phase dropping. It was going to positive uh, numbers again. So this is uh, uh, what the theory tells us, and uh, uh, then we want to, to <coughs> fit this to data. However, it's good to see how it depends on the on various parameters. So here, on the left uh, column. There is a Schwarzschild case. On the right column, there is Kerr case, uh, A spin equals 1. And uh, different colors are for different heights of the core point source corona. And uh, on the top rows is uh, 30 degrees inclination, and bottom is 60 degrees inclination. So if you look at uh, how it depends on the height, you see that the larger the height, the longer the amplitude. Uh, of the delay, so it really has something to do with how far, uh, I mean, what is the geometry of the system. Also, because this time uh, response is uh, longer, you can see that these now points where the phase dropping happens is uh, at lower frequencies because we have longer time scales. What happens uh, when we compare different inclinations? One can see that for different inclinations, you have a smaller time lags for higher inclinations. And uh, also, you can see that there is a slight change in this phase dropping, but it, it's, it's not a huge change. If you look at the spin, that is between left and right, you can see that uh, the null points are more or less at the same position. What is changing, however, is still the amplitude of this uh, wax. Second figure to show uh, other b behavior on other parameters. Uh, on these figures, I show uh, uh, changes in different parameters. For example, in this first one, we change the isotropiness of, of the corona. So we just tell that there is more photons coming down to the disk than to the observer, or opposite. It is given by this n primary to n reflection ratio. You can see that uh, the amplitude of these legs are different, but the uh, null points are the same. Uh, the same goes for uh, reflection directionality, uh, which just tells us how the emission from the disk uh, depends on the angle of, re uh, of reflection. Uh, because this is uh, some kind of unknown or uh, when we want to calculate the reflection. And one can see that there is, again, dependence on amplitude. The amplitude depends on it. However, the, these null points, the phase dropping frequencies does not depend on it. Uh, similar is for the photon index of the primary power law and uh, dependence on energy band. So these are, <coughs> again, uh, the delays calculated for soft excess iron line and the Compton hump, you can see that their amplitude will be different. Uh, it is mainly because uh, the amplitude of the reflection uh, with respect to the uh, primary is different at these energy bands. However, the 
these frequencies are the same zonal points and the same if we play with ionization or different ionizations uh, degrees dependence on radius one can see again that uh, the amplitude of the phase of the leg changes while this phase dropping does not change frequencies phase dropping. Okay, if you want to look at uh, leg energy dependence, one can see uh, that for very low frequencies, the amplitude of the Fourier transform of the reflection can be uh, divided into energy part and uh, frequency part, while the energy part is uh, very similar to, to the uh, re uh, relative reflection spectra, and the uh, phase does not depend on energy. Or very, uh, very little. We already showed that uh, the time lag can be calculated in this uh, in this uh, way, uh, where one is because of dilution of the primary. So if we do either the limit for a very low frequency, sine phi <coughs> uh, will go to phi, uh, will go to zero. Uh, and the uh, arcus tangens uh, of small number will uh, cancel arcus tangens. So we will eventually see that it is a phase for very low frequency, which goes to zero over f. This is already um, some kind of constant number. It doesn't go to zero. Uh, and then there is a ratio where there is the energy dependence is through uh, this amplitude, which is close to the uh, relative uh, spectra. However, it's both on in the nominator and denominator. So uh, this is this time lag is very similar to the reflection spectra only if actually either AF is small, which is usually not the case, or CR is small, which is the case for example for Schwarzschild black hole where the reflection is much smaller than uh, I mean it's uh, 0.1 let's say of uh, of uh, primary and then for in this case really the lag should be similar to the uh, spectra. The other way how to get rid of this uh, denominator dependence on energy is to, to use the reflection free, uh, phases, uh, the frequencies where the reflection uh, phases of the transform is plus or minus p half and then uh, cosine will be zero, sine will be one, and you have arcus tangens of AF at frequency times the CR uh, spectrum for very low, for, for low free, still for low frequencies. So again, uh, if this is low, uh, the arcus tangens is linear. So if we make figures of what I've just told, on the uh, top figures, we can see the, uh, Fourier, the, the phase of the Fourier transform of the reflection. So you can see there is a phase wrapping here. On the left, there is a case for uh, theta, third, uh, the inclination 30 degrees, and on the left, uh, right, theta, the inclination of the observer 60 degrees, and all the both cases are for spin A equals 1. So I choose the frequencies uh, where uh, this uh, phase is either plus or minus uh, p half and the, very, and the lowest frequency and I compare with the spectrum spectral shape. It's on the bottom uh, figures and one can see that uh, the green one is the, the leg spectrum for, frequency, for the lowest frequency. Uh, the blue one is the leg spectrum for the frequency where this phase is minus p half the red one is where it is plus p half, and then by black there is uh, this uh, uh, relative reflection spectrum. And you can see that uh, really the shape is very, very similar in these cases. It's not that similar, or I mean, there are some differences, for example, in this case, and also in, you can see some a little bit different uh, shape of the iron line here and here. And uh, it is already due to the fact that this frequency is not that low uh, that, these, uh, that these are true. It's already starting to diverge. That's why the 
the spectral shape is not exactly the same, but still it is uh, very similar. <coughs> so my summary is that uh, uh, we have studied the, frequen the frequency and energy dependence of legs in AGN from theoretical point of view in this lamppost scenario, and we find that the frequency dependence of the leg is mainly due to the geometry. I mean, by frequency dependency, I mean where this uh, phase dropping happens, so where are these now points, while the magnitude of the legs depends on many details of the model, on the height, spin, ionization, anisotropy of the source, energy. So from the, to really uh, tell the geometry from only the magnitude of the leg, you, will have, you would have to have very good uh, model uh, describing the system. So it is very much model dependent. Whereas these uh, frequencies where it crosses zero, uh, this is much less uh, model dependent. It depends mainly on the height of the source and probably on its size, but that was not studied here. And we confirmed that light versus energy follows quite well the spectral shape at the right frequency, either at the low frequencies or at these frequencies uh, where uh, reflection phase is uh, plus minus p half. Thank you very much for your attention.